Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today. This is the sixth webinar in our associate member webinar series. And today we have GCP Applied Technologies uh, presenting for us a webinar on conventional concrete with unconventional performance admixtures for concrete. So just to go over a little bit of an intro here. So my name is Camille Riche. I'm the office manager with Concrete Ontario, and I will be your facilitator today. I also have Tracy De Silva joining us today. Uh, she is going to be taking over for me for my mat leave as office manager for the next year or so. Uh, and we also have Oliver Zhao, our technical services engineer, who will be helping us out with our question and answer period later on. Uh, so we are about halfway through our uh, associate member webinar series for the year. Uh, and it's great to see that so many of you are still joining us and uh, and learning more about some of the products and services that our associate members offer the industry. So to go over some basic housekeeping rules, um, uh, the webinar should be about 40 minutes or so today, followed by a question and answer period. And then we will be doing our Kahoot pop quiz round, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with now. All of the participants are muted, so if you do have any questions, please just type them into the question pane in the control panel on uh, your right-hand side. And the presentation and PDFs will be posted on our website afterwards if you need to access those. Our presenter today is Thomas Wheland. He is the Senior Technical Specialist for GCP Applied Technologies in Canada. He is a licensed professional engineer in the province of Ontario with over 30 years in the concrete and construction industry. His experience spans a wide array, including ready-mix concrete, cement manufacturing, cementitious and supplementary materials, admixtures, quality control and assurance, troubleshooting, training, training and education, and precast. Thomas is active in many organizations promoting industry and presenting many educational seminars. He is a member of the Canadian Concrete Pipe and Precast Association, former member of the Canadian Precast Concrete Quality Assurance Committee, Concrete Ontario, he is a voting member of the Canadian Standards Association for CSA A23.1, A23.2, Concrete Materials and Methods of Concrete Construction, Test Methods and Standard Practices for uh, Concrete Technical Committee. And he's the chairman of the Physical Test Methods Committee and voting member of the CSA Standard A3000 Cementitious Material uh, Committee. So thank you so much for joining us, Thomas. I'm going to hand over the uh, controls to you, and okay. uh, I'm sure we're all eager to get started. All right. And there you go. Thank you very much, Camille. Uh, good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us. I'm with the GCP Technologies, as Camille stated, and today we're going to be going over an exciting uh, presentation on uh, control flow concrete, as well as some other admixtures. Uh, control flow concrete is basically regular concrete that is taken to phenomenal performance or exceptional performance with the addition of an admixture. Okay. Have you ever asked yourself, we all know what SCC is, self-consolidating concrete, but what if there was a concrete that used a standard mix design, okay, your regular 25 to 45 MPA mix design, and created something that gave you a slump flow range of 400 to 600 millimeters with a predictable slump flow without segregation, okay, and a flowability retention of one hour with good moisture uh, tolerance because there is moisture fluctuations and minimal vibration required to place it fast placement and easier finishing and good discharge on the end of the shoot that would be something that would be worth considering it would be conventional concrete with unconventional performance and that solution is control flow concrete with concera admixtures now control flow concrete is enabled by the admixture Okay, it enables the production of the control, control flow concrete, which is a segregation resistant high flow concrete. But the key is it uses your conventional mix design, nothing fancy. The control flow concrete is a different category to help the industry. It is conventional concrete with enhanced flow. 
using the Consera admixture line. It's not self-consolidating concrete with reduced flow, okay? Applications include horizontal slabs, elevated decks, vertical walls, columns. It's a labor saver because you get that flow, that uh, semi-self-consolidating flow, and you get that fast finishing, that fast placement and easy finishing. So we're all familiar with SCC up top here, but this is control flow concrete. It gives you a flow, a slump flow, not a slump. It's the admixture that enables the ready mix producer to make that cohesive concrete, which results in the controlled flow. But again, the key is conventional mix design, okay? It gives you a high value to producers and contractors and even the uh, owners versus the standard mix. It's easy to produce consistently, and that's the key, consistently. It allows faster construction with less labor to place, and it allows the producer to differentiate and offer value to their customers. So it's a new concrete category, it's a new product solution. When I said it's simple, that's what I meant. It takes your conventional design with no adjustments or minimal adjustments, you drop in the admixture, and you're done. It's consistent, it's routine quality control. Every truck is the same. It's got high flow and workability. It, and of course, because of that, it's easy to place, easy to finish and increases your productivity. It gives you a high quality uh, concrete and it saves you time uh, on the project and it's environmentally friendly. Let's compare. On the top, is a proportion of your conventional mix design. You have air, water, cement, fine aggregates, and coarse aggregates. If you look at the bottom, which is self-consolidating concrete, you can see right away that you have air, water, cement, fine aggregates, and coarse aggregates, but the proportions are way different and you're using way more cement. And you're also readjusting the fine and coarse aggregate proportions and self-consolidate concrete. Another thing that you need is you need good gradations. If you look in the middle, control flow concrete, the proportions are the same as your conventional mix design because you're using that mix design, which has already been tested and all you're doing is dropping in that admixture. So if you have a conventional mix with 180 mil slump with a high range water reducer, you drop in the admixture, and you get a 400 to 600 millimeter slump, okay? Now, of course, if you want higher than that, then you've got to go to self-consolidating concrete, which is 600 millimeters or more. Okay, so let's compare the performance of the two, of all three, actually. This is your conventional mix on the left, on the right is self-consolidating, and in the middle is control flow. So your conventional mix is known as a workhorse but it's not easy to place and it's got high labor demand and but the segregation risk is low. It's not self-consolidating, self but it uses normal powder contents. There's no mixed design adjustments because you know what it is. You've been using it day in, day out. It's tolerant to moisture conditions and it's routine and the drying shrinkage is whatever it is, it's normal. If you go over to SCC, it's easy to place. It's low labor demand and it's it, it, it's some it's self-consolidating, but the segregation resist risk is higher and you have to increase your cement contents. You also have to have good quality aggregates, and you usually need to reproportion that mix and construct a specific mix just for that application. It needs close QC and extra effort. And oftentimes the drying shrinkage is higher because you have higher cement contents and there's higher paste content. If you go over to control flow concrete, it takes your conventional mix design and turns it into a semi-consolidating mix. It's easy to place. It has low labor demand, just like SCC, but the segregation risk is low, just like your conventional mix, because it doesn't use much more cement than your regular mix because that's what it uses. There's minimal or no adjustment to your mix design. It's very tolerant to moisture and it's routine quality control. It has normal drying shrinkage because it has the same 
mix as your uh, conventional mix. So where does this fit? So a conventional mix is here with a high range water reducer. You know, you're 150, 200 mil, but you know what, at a certain point, maybe 220, maybe a little bit more, who knows, uh, your mix is gonna fall apart. It's gonna segregate. Then you have self-consolidating. It stays together, but the segregation risk is high and you have to develop that mix. It's labor intensive because from a QC standpoint, it is labor saving to place, but the material costs are higher because you're using more cement and the quality can vary. In the middle, you have control flow concrete and you can approach, you can butt up right up against that edge of it where SCC starts, but you're using your normal mix proportions and it's robust, it's labor saving, it's self consolidating and it saves you project time, okay? So again, to repeat, it is conventional concrete with enhanced flow, it's not SCC. It has the same type of performance levels. It's semi self consolidating, okay? It doesn't segregate. It gives you improved flow around steel, it gives you rapid discharge, fast pumping, easy placement, and easy finishing. And it doesn't require a lot of vibration to consolidate. So let's take a look. If you were to produce, try to get up into that flow range with a high range water reducer, you'd get this, you'd get segregation. But with S with uh, Concera and control flow concrete, even at the 600 mark, you're still you still got a uniform mix right here. The other thing that it allows you to do is it gives you greater moisture tolerance or water tolerance. It increases that window of acceptable mix designs to maintain that cohesiveness without the mix falling apart. So with the blue line, that's that's with Concera. And it gives you a good portion of water adjustment before that mix begins to begins to do anything. In a conventional mix, you know, you don't have a very high degree of water tolerance before that mix begins to segregate and fall apart. So Cancera and control flow concrete provides excellent rheology control, excellent water tolerance. It uses your conventional mix, that's why it's simple. Okay, and it it's consistent because that mix has been tried and true. It's easy to place and it gives you faster construction. And that of course leads to a better bottom line. So just to repeat, uh, ready mix producer, uh, you can usually get a labor savings with, with SCC and you can usually get the same labor savings with control flow concrete in Sarah. So to repeat, it uses your own mix design. It's simple, it's consistent, it's easy and it's fast. And it allows you to add value to the to contractors as a ready mix producer. You can use Concera in the residential and commercial markets. You can use it for floor slabs, basement walls, basement slabs. Uh, you can use it commercially, slabs, beams, columns, shear walls, footings, pilings, it doesn't matter. It's, it gives you segregation resistant mixes, cohesive mixes with conventional mix design. So that leads to fast construction. It leads to labor savings and it gives you a better bottom line. So let's take a look at the performance. Another good thing about Concera is that it has uh, some water retention in it. The concrete on the left was poured one and a half hours before the concrete on the right. The concrete on the right quickly began to bleed out and crust, so it wouldn't be easy to finish at all. In fact, it was gone. And the reason was, is because of the weather conditions. The one on the left is still workable after an hour and a half, and the one that was just poured isn't. So. The concrete that he's finishing is still workable even in heavy wind and Concera helps retain that moisture in finishing. So you'll see in this video, and hopefully you can hear the sound, that the gentleman's vest is blowing in the wind 
and there'll be another gentleman coming in here and his vest is blowing in the wind too. And you can hear the sound coming off of the, off of the wind. So Camille, if you could play that video. Great, thank you, Camille. So hopefully you all heard the uh, wind whipping across that uh, that concrete, but you could certainly see the, the gentleman's vest blowing in the wind and the one on the right as well. Okay, the other thing with Kinsera is this. If you draw a line down the middle here, this side is a regular mix with just high range water reducer. This side is that same mix with the Kinsera admixture added. You can see that when you're trying to get up to a high, a high slump flow with just high range water reducer, what happens is the aggregate is left behind and you've got paste and liquid in this area and the stability of the mix is not very good. That's a fail because that mix is segregated. But if you look on this side with the Kinsera, you've got a rolling edge here where the aggregate particles are still embedded in the mix and it's all nice and uniform. And that's what Kinsera does. Now let's take a look at this other video here with Kinsera in action. This is control flow concrete. Using conventional mix designs. And in a minute here, you see the concrete coming down the chute. It looks just like your regular concrete. That's because it is. It's a simple mix design, but watch. Do you see that flow? That flow is similar, self-consolidating, easy placing. Those guys aren't moving anything. That stuff is moving on its own. You see on the bottom with the admixture, the conventional mix design on the top is the, that without the admixture. The top without it and the bottom with it. The top is segregated. You can see the liquid coming out. You can see it on the edges here. It's segregation resistant. And it's got fast discharge. You can see that rolling edge. That gives it a good passing ability so that when you're using steel or reinforcement, it flows by it. Of course, when, you're, when you've got self-flowing concrete, the labor requirement is less. It's easy finishing. You can use it for elevated decks, grade beams, uh, foundation mats. And the other thing is it produces a nice finish as well for pilings, for columns and walls. You can see floors. It's simple design with consistent performance, and it's easy to place and finish. Fast construction, and it's been used all over the world. So in this case, there's two products. One is you start off with a all of the meet the uh, ASTM C494. Uh, one of them, you start off with an admixture uh, with a concrete that's 125 millimeter to 200 millimeter, and you turn it and you add it uh, to that concrete mix with the high range water reducer, and then you bring it up to 400 and 600 millimeters. It has good moisture tolerance, and it can be used for air and non air and train concrete. It doesn't matter. It still provides you good segregation resistance and good moisture tolerance, and it's formulated with the latest in uh, chemical technology. It gives you a fast discharge, high flowing concrete, 
The other product is a standalone product, okay? In other words, it doesn't need any additional water reducing. And it's a type F uh, C494. So it treats regular concrete, which would be a, a 75 to 100 millimeter slump and brings it to, to four to 600. And again, it gives you the same properties. It can be used for air or non-air and train concrete. It has better material cost because it's using your regular mix than, than a specialized mix proportion with higher cement content. It gives you superior moisture control and uh, segregation resistance, and it minimizes the aggregate blocking. And the other thing is it's formulated also with the latest in uh, chemical admixture technologies. Gives you good flow and high, uh, high finishability and faster discharge. So it's an advantage all around. The next topic I'd like to go to is uh, shrinkage reduction. And basically, uh, shrinkage reducing admixture, Eclipse, now, all concrete cracks, it's important to know that, but it's a matter of where those cracks are planned and whether you can extend cracks and what methods you use. But it's important to understand, how do you get a floor like this without cracking? This was a floor done at Harrow's in Las Vegas, and it had the uh, admix in it. There's many ways for concrete to crack because it's weak in tension and it's basically a high stiffness material, but it's usually restrained from movement. So there's lots of different things that can cause it to crack and cause it to move. And some of those things are plastic shrinkage, thermal movements, structural issues like reflective cracking or settlement cracking, um, there's gravity and, and other things, corrosion, ASR, uh, delayed etronite formation, carbonation. There's autogenous shrinkage and there's drying shrinkage. So it's important to understand the types of cracking as well. Did the crack happen after hardening or before hardening? Is it a physical, a chemical, a thermal, or a structural issue? Okay, and you know there's subcategories here. Is it a before hardening thing? Is it a plastic issue? Is it plastic shrinkage, plastic settlement? Or is it a construction issue, formwork movement or subgrade movement? Or thermal, early frost damage, for instance? Regardless, concrete shrinks and cracks. And even after uh, concrete's uh, porous material, even after hydration, concrete always has more water than is required for hydration. Okay, there's a chemical reaction that takes place between the, uh, the uh, cement and the, uh, the water, and as well, any supplementary cementing materials that you have. And they create a calcium silicate uh, hydrates. They create a gel. And the, the chemical reactions in cement and cementitious materials, they draw water in and they require a certain amount of water. And also there's excess water and the loss of, these, of this water from the concrete as it hardens results in volume reduction. You look at it on a microscopic scale, okay? The pores lose water due to hydration, the reaction and evaporation. So the pores in the concrete are filled with water. And as the pores become less saturated, okay, you get a menisci that forms or meniscus at the water to air uh, interface. And this is due to surface tension. And that surface tension forms this menisci and it exerts a force that push, that pulls inward on the sides of the walls. And these forces are the primary cause of shrinkage. Okay, you also have drying shrinkage. And usually what happens is after 14 days, typically you have about a third of the ultimate shrinkage. At 28 days, usually about half. And at 90 days, 70 to 90% or 75 to 90%. And after a year, most of it, most of it is usually complete. Now, how does a surface or a, uh, a shrinkage reducing admixture work? How does Eclipse work? 
Well, it reduces the surface tension. There's nothing fancy. And it reduces the 28-day shrinkage by 40 to 60%, and the ultimate shrinkage after a year by 30 to 50%, okay? Another thing that can be uh, advantageous when you're using a shrinkage reducing admixture is you can address some curling issues. Curling is caused by drying shrinkage and negative moisture or temperature gradients across the thickness of the slab. So curling's impact on cracking, there's a moisture profile and there's a differential moisture profile from the top to the bottom, which sets up this, this profile and the differential shrinkage. And what you get is this kind of thing. And then eventually it cracks in the middle. So what are the applications that are common with uh, shrinkage reducing admixture? Uh, large slabs, slabs on grade, uh, something that's specified, maybe you have a specific shrinkage specification you need to meet. Low shrinkage grout, water treatment facilities where there's no shrinkage required. There's, there's very little shrinkage required. So other applications, topping slabs, where there's moisture concern in slabs that require a vapor barrier or concerns of curling, uh, concerns of drying shrinkage. You want a good looking slab and you need to meet a shrinkage specification. Okay, so just to summarize, the Eclipse uh, product line addresses the demand for crack reduction. And it presents uh, a new offering for floor market too. You can get some uh, reduced jointing and maybe some lower first cost, lower life cycle costs. There's a lot of data uh, for these chemical admixtures that have been collected over a wide array of materials and mixes throughout North America. And you can ex what you can expect is a significant reduction in drying shrinkage and reduction in cracks caused by drying shrinkage and reductions in uh, curling. The last topic I'd like to get into is rheology modifiers, or you may hear viscosity modifying admixtures. And these are important because they have a variety of applications and they're very helpful in many situations. So we'll talk about rheology and its importance, viscosity modifiers, and why, why would you use it? And in what, in what way would you use it? So let's talk about some definitions. Rheology is the science of flowing of the flow of materials, including the studies of the deformation of hardened concrete, and the handling and placing of freshly mixed concrete, and the behavior of slurries, pastes, and the like. Okay. Viscosity is the property of a material that resists change in shape or the arrangement of its elements during flow and the measure thereof. We have another property, it's called thixotropic property or thixotropic behavior, which is the tendency of a material to act as a semi-solid or a gel at rest and fluid while in motion, okay? Uh, property is said to be thixotropic when it exhibits a decrease in viscosity with time when the materials are subject to a shearing stress, okay? So let's talk about the uh, specifics of a uh, viscosity modifying admixture and performance. Where would you use them? How would you use them? And what's the benefit? Well, uh, a rheology modifying admixture like VMAR3, for instance, they meet ASDM C494, their type S specific performance, okay? And they are usually used in an array of applications. They are very helpful in uh, self-consolidating concrete because they improve the moisture tolerance and they help keep the mix together. Uh, pumped and extruded concrete because you can get pump pressure reductions. Underwater concrete for anti-washout to help hold that mix in place and together to keep the mortar from washing out. And mix designs using harsh or manufactured fine aggregates, which are sometimes a little bit tougher to finish. 
So in self-consolidating concrete, the BMR3 mechanism increases the vis viscosity, okay? The, it's a viscosity modifying admixture. So it increases the viscosity, but it maintains the flowability of the concrete. So that makes it very helpful when you're trying to produce uh, self-consolidating concrete with a, law, with a large or a high flow, because it makes that production and of a quality SCC easier, okay? And it minimizes that segregation and the blocking. It also minimizes if you have some moisture fluctuations or water control issues, it minimizes the impact of that. And it enhances the surface appearance of your uh, finished product and allows for mixed design flexibility and optimization. Um, and you know, sometimes we don't always have the best aggregates. So it kind of compensates for that a little bit. And it helps hold the water in and it helps control bleeding. How does it do this? Okay. So normally, as far as moisture tolerance goes with SCC concrete, okay? If you have a flux, this is 150 liters per meter, 160, 170, 180. You can see here that if you have a 1% change in sand moisture and you get a 10 liter change without any kind of viscosity modifying admixture, that slope is fairly steep. So what you're doing all of a sudden with a, with a change is you're dropping that viscosity right down very quickly. If, you, if you're going from 160 to 170, you're going from a 500 to a 600. And if your mix is proportioned that way, your mix is likely going to fall apart. Now, what a viscosity modifying admixture does is it flattens that slope so that you slide down the slope a lot slower. It's, it's a lot flatter. So that viscosity isn't dropped quite as drastically and your mix doesn't fall, as, fall apart as quickly so that your moisture tolerance is increased. Okay, so the viscosity modifying admixture like BMR3 can improve the moisture tolerance when necessary. And the, the thing is though, you may in, need to increase the high range water reducer a little bit to get more flow, okay? Okay, so the key thing to remember here is you got to test uh, with uh, self-consolidating concrete to see what the optimal uh, amount of high range water reducer versus uh, viscosity modifying admixture is. But basically as the BMA goes up, you need more super P uh, to make it flow and to get a, to get a good uh, flowing concrete. Because uh, what a viscosity modifying admixture does is it, if you think of it like water and going toward honey, the more that you add. Okay, so when do you incorporate this into a mix, into a self-consolidating mix? Well, when your current mix is showing some level of segregation or you'd like to be able to pour at a higher slump flow, okay? Or maybe you have some water issues uh, from batch to batch with consistency. Maybe you have admic or, or aggregates that are not so good in the gradation or they're inconsistent. And maybe you want to improve the, uh, the look of your hardened concrete or you need some help with the bleed rate, okay? But anyway, you can optimize the mix design as well. And sometimes you can squeeze out a little bit of uh, savings. So how does a VMA work? Well, it's, it's very simple. Uh, there's polymers in, uh, in a viscosity modifying admixture. And what happens is when you apply energy in a stationary situation, these polymers, these little lines are all interconnected. But when you apply an energy, okay, they align in the direction of, of the applied energy or the flow. Okay, and they help lubricate that mix and you can see that they align and they, they help to lubricate that coarse and angular sand particle to reduce friction. And once it comes back to rest, it locks up again. So for pumping, the inclusion of a viscosity modifying admixture like VMR3 
can improve pumpability and reduce your pump pressures, sometimes by 25 to 70% or 75%. And this is achieved by that polymer chain alignment under energy, uh, which you saw in the previous slide, and I'll, I'll show you specifically again. So VMR3 in pumped concrete will allow the mix design to contain harsher aggregate, okay, and it'll still be able to pump. Or you can use a reduction, it uses a reduction, it allows a reduction in pump pressure as well. And the concrete acts like it has, it's more creamy, it has extra cement. So it, it's important to optimize that mix design though, okay? And this has been used throughout North America to, uh, and on many pump jobs. So how does this work? Well, basically, again, the polymer aligns in the direction of flow. So if this is your hose and you're pushing and you've got pump pressure from this direction and you're pushing in this direction, the polymer aligns and that allows uh, uh, concrete to hose interface, allows the friction to be reduced and allows aggregate interlocking to be reduced because there's now space here and it's lubricating. It also prevents segregation in the hose and thus it reduces pump pressure by 25 to 75%. Okay. Uh, a viscosity modifying admixture is also used in anti-washout underwater applications. I don't know that there's that many here in Ontario, but uh, it provides easier production of the quality underwater concrete because it helps hold that mix together so that the mortar doesn't wash out. It provides that stability under the water and reduces that segregation. The other thing that VMR3 is good at, or viscosity modifying admixture, it can help when you've got harsh aggregates and your finishability isn't so good. And the reason it does this is again, polymer chain alignment. It aligns in the direction of flow, okay, when finishing. So, you know, in many places, there's a shortage of good sand. And a lot of concrete producers have been forced to reduce uh, or to use stuff that is more angular or harsher. And this is where VMR3 can help. It can make that, it can allow you to blend sands and it can allow you to use sands that are maybe not, not ideal, but it still makes them finishable uh, for flat work. There's another uh, viscosity modifying admixture. It's called F100. And this one is, uh, is a high efficiency uh, liquid admixture. And it uses, uh, it imparts lubricity to the concrete as well and increases the productivity, especially in, uh, in uh, conventional slump SCC and in zero slump uh, concrete. Okay, it improves the surface texture of that concrete specifically. And it's very effective in those low slump uh, concretes like uh, concrete pipe, extrusion, paving, slip forming. And the reason is it allows you to provide a higher throughput and it makes it easier to, uh, to get through the machines. It gives you uh, more creaminess and provides superior water tolerance just like the VMR3, and it facilitates the use of angular aggregates. And but it, the, the big thing is too, it reduces the noticeable surface defects. Okay, it seems to require less cement to close those surfaces and lower that, uh, and this lowers material cost. Okay, so you can go through some of these performance attributes. But basically, it's a rheology modifier acting like a lubricant, okay? So it flows more readily without vibration. And it improves extrusion and the surface texture. It's creamier. It has more body than the other uh, viscosity modifier. So it's, it's good for mixed lubricity, but it still holds that mix together without being sticky. And it allows less clumping and less lumps, improves finishes, it's even flow, it's less sticky, okay? And generates more paste or like it's more paste. It has a moisture retention aid to, or a moisture retention to aid your curing, okay? And keep that water in. 
and uh, less cracking and it's better finishing. There's more sit surface uh, paste, so you get less bug holding. And it provides crisper edges and fewer defects. And this is SCC to reduce bug holes and formed finishes. You can see how beautiful that looks. Uh, barrier rail. Uh, the problem was the supplier had a real problem with the barrier rail. There, there was a lot of handwork required to make the mix uh, smooth uh, or to make the rail smooth after the uh, after the machine. And it was difficult to discharge. The solution was adding some uh, viscosity modifier F100 uh, to improve the surface finish. Okay, typically a contractor places a curb at a 25 millimeter slump and it results in a wavy surface. And this was an actual case. So at the top, he placed the 25 millimeter slump with a wavy surface. He added the F100 and then placed it at a 12 millimeter slump. And you can see that it's way less wavy. Okay, so in summary, the VMAR3 is uh, great for a manufactured sand. It's good for SCC. It's good for stabilizing droughts, pumpable, flowable mixes, and flowing concrete. And it's good in air and trained or non air trained mixes. The F100 is great for dry cast, hollow core, SCC mixes to reduce bug holing, um, and high cementitious contents, uh, flat work, or where there's coarse or manufactured sand and curb, gutter, barrier wall mixes and manufactured sand. And that's an overview of uh, three exciting technologies. I'd like to thank you very much for your attention and your attendance. And if there's any questions, oh. I'd like to hand it back to you, Camille. Excellent. Thank you so much, Thomas. So, um, Oliver, I, we're going to hand it over to you for uh, some of the questions that have been coming in throughout the presentation. Sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tom, for the presentation. A lot of uh, information. And I can see quite a few questions that has been already answered <laughs> throughout the okay. presentation, that, that's great. Okay, let me take a look. Um, so I have one uh, quite specific question here uh, for the uh, VMAR3 to be used as a pump ed for uh, poor quality aggregate. What dosage would you recommend? Well, that, that would depend on the mix. You'd have to see how harsh the aggregates are, but but typically, you're probably in uh, two hundred, maybe to four hundred milliliters per hundred kgs, something like that. Maybe less. It depends on how bad the aggregates are. Great. Have to, you have to test and see. Um, you have uh, discussed uh, um, on quite a few slides about the Concera. Can you just mm -hmm. um, provide a very brief comparison of that uh, specific product with what's available on the market? What um, are the specific benefits that it has? Well, the specific benefit that it has, you have conventional concrete, which is you know, your low slump concrete, and then you have self-consolidating concrete. Okay, self-consolidating concrete flows and you have labor savings, you have, it's easy to place, but there is segregation of risk and it's, it's usually high cement content because you have to design that mix specifically and it requires a lot of QC. Your conventional mix uh, doesn't have that labor saving. It's just placeable and uh, it is your routine workhorse mix. What Concera does and what Control Flow Concrete does is it takes that routine mix and turns it into a semi-self-consolidating concrete so that it flows like you saw in that video. 
which means you need less labor to place it. You need less labor to, uh, to pour it because it's self-consolidating, it's self-leveling, okay? At least on a semi-level, it bumps up against where that SCC starts. And it's not always, you don't always need SCC for those applications. You may, you may wanna pour a driveway quicker. You may wanna pour a basement slab or a floor slab quicker. And in that case, you just drop in the admixture at, at, at the plant, okay? And you use it in those cases. And it, it provides you some uh, labor saving and it also provides you some flexibility in the mix because it also, you can use it in many ways. Uh, you can also use it if you've got high wind, uh, if you've got uh, bleeding that's, uh, or the, the va fast evaporation out of that concrete to help keep that in. It's also very good on finishing. So there's a, a, a lot of different applications for this uh, control flow concrete, as you saw in the video. Great, just a follow-up question. Um, what is the mechanism of um, uh, Concera? Is that a PCE based? Well, Concera, <laughs> uh, uh, without getting into proprietary specifics, Concera is a uh, a high technology blend of a number of high performing uh, new new admixtures and uh, it meets a uh, type F specifications in ASDM, but it has more than just that in it. Uh, it. It allows you to hold, because it has, it allows you to hold a mix together. It allows you to get high flow. It allows you to use aggregates that maybe are not so great. So, and it, it keeps that mix together from segregating as you saw in the video. Awesome. Thank you, Tom. And the next question is actually a question uh, that I want to know too. <laughs> um, so can you provide maybe um, um, some known project that have used this product uh, locally uh, and maybe what are the benefits uh, from using that product uh, has been? Well, locally in Ontario, um, we have not had too many projects, but we've used it out west uh, in a lot of different applications out in Manitoba. Uh, they're using it in uh, slabs and in, uh, in commercial and in both housing on a regular basis. It's part of their regular mix uh, in a lot of the producers there and out in uh, Newfoundland as well. In fact, that video that you saw from the crusting that was done in Newfoundland, okay? And in Newfoundland, they have a lot of problems with, especially this time of year, when they're close to the water, that wind whips across the concrete and it pulls water out. So the Concera helped hold that in and it made the concrete uh, finishable even after quite a while. And they're using it just like they're using conventional concrete. But, the, and the, with the big savings being that uh, you're reducing your labor Okay, just like you are with SCC, and you're able to fill areas that maybe you can't reach with regular concrete, like grade beams and that kind of things and pilings. Okay, I don't know if awesome. that answers your question, or do you want to ask a follow up for that? Uh, I think it looks good. Thank you, Tom. Yep, so thanks for the answer. If, if anybody needs, if, if there are specific examples. I could get specific uh, projects from various account managers if that's if that's something somebody wants. Awesome, perfect. Thank you, Tom. Um, so as mentioned, I go went through all the questions here. Uh, many of them has been answered. Uh, I have got one more question coming in. Um, uh, is there any admixtures which increases FA activity? Pardon me? The fly ash activity? Yeah. Reactivity, sorry. Um, reactivity. Sorry, I couldn't hear you there, Oliver. Yes. Uh, fly ash reactivity. 
Um, no, yeah, I mean, yeah. not specifically. There are admixtures out that, uh, you know, allow you to reduce uh, or in development that will allow you to reduce some cementitious contents. There are admixtures out that, you know, reduce water contents. But uh, if you've got a fly ash that's non-reactive, it's non-reactive. We have, that may be on the horizon, what with the quality of fly ashes, uh, particularly out in Western Canada, uh, deteriorating. So. Okay, thank you, Tom. Um, maybe a last question here. Um, uh, I know that we don't really uh, talk much uh, into the actual cost, but I'm still, mm -hmm. Uh, going to ask this question here. So, if uh, we use this product, uh, what's the you know cost related to the increase to that job? Um, is the cost relatively low? Would it price out of the jobs that uh, you do? So, without mentioning about price, maybe you want to elaborate on that. Okay. Well, Kinsera is no different in price than a than a very good high range water reducer, okay? Um, or, or that type of concrete. It's, it is uh, something that you'd have to talk to your ready mix uh, supplier about, but it doesn't add substantial cost to a project because one of, one of the uh, systems too, you don't need any additional water reduction. You just use your regular, uh, your regular type A, or your basic water reducer, and then you and 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 your normal mix, and you put it in. So, if you're replacing a high range water reducer, the cost is offset. It's not. It, it, there's nothing. It, it doesn't price anything out of the range. And I think the labor savings that you get from it far exceed what you'd any anything that you'd any minor amount that you'd uh, that you'd have to uh, get from your ready mix supplier or give to the rainy supplier. I don't know if that answers that question. Perfect. I think that's a great uh, way how to answer this question. Thank you, Tom. Uh, last question here. I think I can answer that. So the presentation and the recording uh, will be made available on our uh, uh, website uh, and the YouTube channel, and you'll be able to review all the information presented by Tom today. Uh, so thank you again, Tom, for answering all the questions. I'm going to hand back to Camille for the last uh, portion of the webinar today. Okay, thank you, everybody, and thank you, Oliver and Camille. Excellent. Thanks, Oliver, and thank you, Thomas. That was a great presentation. We had some really specific questions, so hopefully that means everyone was uh, paying very close attention and will do very well in the CAHOOTS quiz round now. So if I can get everybody to log in using your smartphone, um, it, all you have to do is go to www.kahoot.it. Uh, you don't have to download any apps or anything like that, so it's quick and easy. Uh, so there will be a game pin that will be shown on the screen shortly if you can just enter your email address. So that way uh, we know who you are and where to send your prizes if you finish in our top three. And everyone will need to enter a HR friendly nickname. Uh, so feel free to be creative, but make sure it's something you won't regret. And uh, the way the quiz round works is the faster you answer each question, as long as it's correct, the more points you will earn. So it is uh, definitely a little bit of a game of speed. And we do have some Amazon gift cards to help motivate everyone's participation today. So first place will be winning a $150 Amazon gift card, second place $100, and third place $50. So I'm just going to get the Kahoot quiz um, pin up on the screen for you here. Okay, we can get everyone to start logging in.
seconds in case we have any last minute uh, people still trying to sign in and we'll get started in a moment. take too much time here for everybody so we're going to get started. Okay, so first question, control flow concrete is People got that one right. And we have Father Time in first place. Control flow concrete with an admixture such as Concerna is. All right, when in doubt, pick all of the above. Looks like most people got that one. And a little bit of a change in standing, some people moving up the ladder. Next question, control flow concrete produced with admixture, such as Concerna, is easy to place. right on that one. Father Time is on a hot streak in first place. True or false? Admixtures such as Concerna take untreated typical 75 millimeter to 100 millimeter slump concrete to 400 millimeter to 600 millimeter slump flow concrete. 50-50 chance on this one. All right, just about everybody got it. And Prakash is on a bit of a hot streak now as well, moving up the ranks. Primary cause of shrinkage is surface tension of the pore solution that forms blank and exerts blank on the side walls of the pore. Being nice and technical with these questions today. bit of a change in our standings there. Eclipse, Eclipse works by reducing the blank and reducing the blank shrinkage by typically 30 to 50 percent. A little all over the place on that one. Two people got that one right. Surface tension and ultimate. 
KD Lap is on a hot streak. Viscosity modifying admixtures like VMAR3, under applied energy work by. Okay, full right on that one. And we have Labman moving up in the standings. Another true or false viscosity is the property of a material which resists change in shape or arrangement of its elements during flow. Wow, everybody got that one right. Excellent. Still have father time in first place, and I believe we are down to our last question. Use of a viscosity modifier. And everybody got that one right, all of the above. So now for our podium in third place, we have D Lap. In second place, we have Lab Man. And in first place, held on to the lead the entire time, we've got Father Time. All right, great job, guys. Thanks for playing. And we will get those uh, Amazon gift cards emailed out to you shortly. I'm gonna jump into our PowerPoint here. So our next webinar that we have coming up is going to be on July 22nd, same time from 10 to 11, and we will have Carbon Cure presenting for us uh, on reducing embodied carbon through the use of mineralized CO2. We hope to have many of you join us for that. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone that did join us today. We had an excellent turnout. Uh, we had a great presentation with uh, lots of specific technical uh, points to learn. And it's great to see so many of our members coming back to learn more about the topics that are being delivered. Hopefully we can slowly get back to normal and we'll eventually see each other at some in-person events, but we do really appreciate everyone's participation in these webinar series that we're putting on. Uh, we hope to see you at our next webinar and stay healthy and safe, everybody. Take care.